Hi, you're listening to the My Body, My Story podcast. Be careful how much you chase your youth. Try and age gracefully. Understand who you are and what your personality is. That's extremely important to figure out early. Try and stay true to yourself. This is the 45045 chapter where we celebrate rule breakers and role models, the women who inspire us to live life our way and to show their sensuality, beauty, soul and true essence. Here we talk about what it's like to be 45 plus, adjusting to the changes that come with time and we listen to the stories of our participants. If you have an interesting story to share, we'd love for you to participate. You can email us on info at alexandrawalker.com and that's Alexandra spelled with a K-S or visit our website alexandrawalker.com. Hi Mirella, uh, welcome to our studio and welcome to the project. And while you're sitting in the makeup chair and Chitra is doing makeup for you, I'll be asking you a few questions. Um, tell us a bit about yourself. Where do I begin? I'm a Leo. <laughs> I'm, I think I'm 46. <laughs> and I live in Sydney. I was born and raised here. My parents are of Italian background, um, but I'm very, very much Australian. And I actually can't believe I'm doing this. I've never done anything like this before. It's actually a bit of fun. <laughs> so what are you most passionate about? People say I have a fairly intense personality. That's quite true. I care an insane amount about politics for some reason. I don't know why. It's quite maddening. I care about people being mistreated. I do love animals. I care a great deal about culture heritage, traditions, philosophy, psychology, these are the things I care about. I care about the logic of human culture and how people interact and how we can enjoy ourselves more without hurting each other really. They're the things I care about. That's nice. Uh, so um, everyone knows that we, with age we change and what positive changes have you experienced so far? The most wonderful thing that I wish young people understood as you get older, and I was lucky to figure this out early, mm -hmm. you really do need to stop caring what people think and that sounds easier than done. But the reality is, is that if you're confident, you're in a top 10 percentile of people around you. And as you get older, you need to realise not everybody's looking at you, everybody's so worried about themselves. Once you understand that, you've got a lot more freedom to fail and to grow. You must have confidence. Even if you don't have it, fake it. I like the saying, this freedom to fail. You have to have freedom to fail. Otherwise, you don't move in any direction. It's very hard to accept. And it takes a lot of strength to do that. So you have to have a lot of courage to do that. I see a lot of young women and I think, I really wish you understood this. But they won't know until they get older. And it's a bit of a tragedy because when you're younger, you spend so much energy trying to please other people. You really should not. It doesn't mean you treat people badly, but you understand what I mean. Yeah. Um, gosh, what other thing that have I understood being older? Um, oh, I also understood this from an early age. Take care of your body because you will age. There is no way around it. You will age. It's just up to you how you age. Mm -hmm. And finally, unfortunately, as grim as it sounds, you will also die. All of us die. So the best thing you can do is make some attempt to plan your life and understand that you will be limited at certain points as horrible as that sounds, but it's not actually a negative message. Yeah, but this is subject where most of the people don't like think about. I know. Yeah, the mortality. It's real though. It, you cannot escape it. You might as well think about death and think about transformation. And it's extremely important. Otherwise, you don't live your life. 
that you can't postpone things. You should. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah, we tend to postpone and wait for the better time, better day. And that's right, and there isn't a better time. Yeah. And what is the biggest challenge um, for you at this age? <laughs> the biggest challenge is trying to fit in all of the things that I haven't yet done. I've achieved a lot, but you realise there's so much more you would like. Mm -hmm. And in life, you do have to sometimes compromise. And I have. And there are a few things I have left to do. And the biggest challenge for me is trying to juggle maintaining my health mm -hmm. as I get older, because I end up with new issues, which are things that I never had to deal with before. When, when you're younger, you're much more resilient. Yeah. As you get older, you're not nearly as resilient. And I'm not just talking about your skin and elasticity. You just don't bounce back from setbacks mm -hmm. as easily. You would think you get better with it with practice, but in actuality, I believe it wears you down. Uh, and that's why when, as you get older, you literally don't have as much stamina and energy to deal with the things that you used to deal with when you were younger. And that's my other challenge. Y you get bored, if you like, yeah. by life. You end up feeling as though you've had every conversation you're going to have. You've met every man you're going to meet. You've, uh, you can't discover anything new. Becoming jaded is death. If you don't desire anything, you're dead. And that's my single biggest challenge, thinking I don't want anything more. It, it's, it's really difficult. Well, it, I'm with you on that. It's challenging to find new in interests which yes. really capture you. Uh, yes. Like in, uh, when you're young, everything is interesting, everything yes. is exciting. <laughs> that's exactly it. Uh, Matthew Viner, oh, he wrote Mad Men and The Sopranos. I saw a talk of his once and he said, by the time you're 40, you will realise you have had every conversation you will ever have. And uh, I was knocked by that sideways. I thought, oh no, is it really true? Please don't be true. But it's true. <laughs> and that's okay. I just have to figure out a way to make life more fascinating for me. Mm -hmm. I just worry that I'm going to be too cynical and jaded because that's very difficult for me not to be. Um, cynicism and a lack of fascination with life, it's, it's paralyzing. Oh, but I think the fact that you talk about this and you realize that you're already not cynical. <laughs> yeah, I am a bit, but I, um, I I am, if you get me in different moods, at the moment I think I'm just trying to be very logical and calm mm -hmm. and extremely sensible. <laughs> but some days I do throw my arms up in the air and I'm exceedingly cynical and I honestly think there's no point. And then at other days I want to fight. It's a mood. Mm. It's my mood. Yeah. And we are allowed to be different. <laughs> Yes, yes. I mean, no one person is going to have the same mood or feel the same every day, and I can't do much about that. So, so far, uh, what would you describe as your greatest accomplishment? Oh, no. Nothing's ever good enough for me. That's a very difficult question to answer. So uh, you still, still want to come? <laughs> I think there's something I would love to do still. I worry that maybe it's past me. Oh, I need, there's one thing left, there's one thing I really want and that's to find some sort of creative artistic outlet. That's the one thing left on my list but in terms of my achievements, oh, oh Lord, it's not my education, it's not, oh actually you know what, as weird as this sounds, my ability to create and find and make friends, it's my social network. Mm. I really believe the people that I have found along the way mm -hmm. are, I don't know, a testament to my collection skills. I've surrounded myself by some very great people mm. and I think that is weirdly my greatest accomplishment. Well, connection's really all that matters in this life. When you yeah. expire, the people you knew and the things that you did are the most important things. That's true. 
And you feel it when, you, like me, moving to a new country and finding yourself um, on your own. And that's where you really realize that the connection and people and your tribe is that important for your um, quality life. Yeah, so I think it is a great accomplishment. So if you could travel back in time and meet your 30-year-old self, uh, what would you tell her? What advice would you give her? Break up with people earlier. Mm. Um, in reality, people waste your time if you let them. And don't let that happen. Have more confidence to walk away. And don't question your self-worth, although that's almost impossible to tell people. But that's more relationship advice. I would say the only area that I am particularly annoyed about is how I've conducted myself in relationships, in that I have waited too long to leave. <laughs> so please just move on swiftly. Just keep moving. <laughs> because other people will waste your time if you let them. Many people don't know what they want. Yeah. You need to know what you want. And time is limited. <laughs> time on this earth is so limited. It seems long, but it's not. I look back now and I find myself saying I've known someone for 30 years. What? Yeah. When did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I find amazing. I'm very grateful I've known these people for 30 years, but I'm absolutely gobsmacked that I have 30 years to my credit where I've been alive and sentient and I can say I have known another human being for 30 years. Yeah. That's very sobering. Mm. And uh, what advice would you give younger women who will eventually reach this age and undergo these changes? Mm. Be careful how much you chase your youth. Try and age gracefully. Understand who you are and what your personality is. That's extremely important to figure out early. Mm -hmm. Try and stay true to yourself. Always be self-sufficient, no matter what. I've been very fortunate in that I am completely financially independent and I've never relied on anyone. I know that's not a possibility for everyone, but do your best to make sure that happens. Mm. I can't stress it enough. So if we move to um, the perfect body image idea, where do you think it comes from? Personally, a popular culture and media, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's fairly obvious. It's changed a lot over the through the ages. I mean, women who were overweight were and pale were better looking, and you know, maybe three to four hundred years ago or so, and that kind of thing. And then, even from say, I would say the fifties, we saw a radical change as women became a lot thinner mm -hmm. in magazines. And I think it's easier for clothes to hang off women that are a lot thinner. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think the body image comes from. What do I think of it? Are you asking me what yeah, I think um, of it? Yes, and what do you think of, of that? Yeah. Hmm. And what is for you perfect body would What's be? What's a perfect body? Um, because we come in all shapes and sizes, you, I once thought, I don't know how this will slot in, but I've never really been that interested in fashion. I care about style. I don't really care about fashion. Mm -hmm. And I always thought to myself, how is it that one person can be, or two people can be wearing the same dress and yet it won't look the same, mm -hmm. you know? One person will look better. And then I realised the clothes I buy doesn't don't matter, you know, it's... None of that matters. How much I spend on something won't matter. How much makeup I wear won't matter. Mm -hmm. My body matters. And my body is my most important fashion accessory. So to all women, I would say, do the best with whatever it is you have. Be very mindful of whether or not you're going to get any surgery. You're better off without it. Mm -hmm. Be it exercise, diet, whatever it is. Take a very, very close interest in your health. Because if you have a good body and face with whatever it is you have, 
you'll look good in anything. You'll look good in a paper bag. It won't matter. Mm -hmm. And it really does. And looking good naked is also extremely important. So for me, being beautiful or looking beautiful is about looking the best you can possibly be with what you have. Mm -hmm. And looking as natural as possible, being as real as possible. That mightn't be always possible. But that for me, I can see that in people. And obviously, if a person's beautiful on the inside as well as the out, that really helps because eventually somebody will find out if you're an awful person. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, and very fast. <laughs> very, yeah, and it radiates out. That's the other thing. I've found people that you may not look at particularly closely. Once they start speaking, once they become animated, they transform mm. and they become extremely beautiful. So there's many ways in which you can convey beauty, you can be beautiful. And unfortunately, also, it depends who you're interacting with. Some people can see it and some people cannot. And what makes you feel the most beautiful? Oh, being desired, which is really sad. I should feel beautiful in my own skin, and sometimes I do. Being desired is really, sadly, uh, when I feel the most beautiful, I think. I think it's very natural, you know, like mm. it's from... It comes from woman's nature. Yeah, I'd be lying if I said that wasn't true. Yeah. You know, I'd be absolutely lying. And uh, what does it mean to you feeling good and looking good? What comes first for you? I, I already know the answer, but I'd like you to answer. What comes first, feeling good or looking good? Yeah. They kind of go hand in hand because when I'm feeling good, I look great. Mm -hmm. um, and... I definitely have more confidence when I know I'm stronger, mm -hmm. physically stronger, fitter, and my skin's clear and I look healthy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, both, both in, they're the same for me, both they're the same. And do you have any favorite quote about being a woman? <sighs> there are a few. There's actually a Public Enemy song <laughs> called, oh, which one is it? It's on Fear of a Black Planet. Revolutionary Generation, that's right. Uh, it's like from the early 90s. But Chuck D, this rapper, is like, oh, what's the line? It's, it's not behind every great man there's a great woman, but it's essentially that kind of mm -hmm. notion. And there is. I mean, that's true. Um, but I think one of my favourite quotes from a woman actually is Maya Angelou's quote about courage. She said that courage is the most important virtue to have because if you don't have that, you can't practice any of the other virtues. Um, and she's a powerhouse of an individual. She's dead now, but she was an extremely strong woman. Um, so in terms of being a woman, I can't really think so much about that, but something that a woman said, yeah, I definitely agree with that. I wish people had more courage. Well, thank you, Mirella. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. And uh, it was uh, very interesting to listen to you and hope you will enjoy the rest of the day in your photo shoots. And... Thank you so much. This is fun. If you have an interesting story to share, we'd love for you to participate. You can email us on info at alexandrawalker.com and that's Alexandra spelled with a K-S or visit our website alexandrawalker.com.